The Five Capes Adventure. Let me tell you about the Five Capes uh, Surf Ski Adventure. What you need to know about the five capes is that it's not the done thing. It's not, there's, there are very few people that can say that they've paddled every single one of these capes. And the reason is simple, is that the coastline is pretty treacherous. Getting it on the right conditions is, you know, can be rare. And, you know, you kind of roll the dice and, and off you go. You see if you can get around these capes. I think there's a certain mystery around paddling around a cape. Um, you know, in, in ancient seafaring folklore, going around a cape was always treacherous or infamous. Um, so, and certainly for surf ski paddling, when you see a, a piece of land um, chucked out from the coastline, there's something in you that says, oh, it'd be great to paddle around that cape and explore the coast, but one, make it around the cape, and two, see what's along the way. You know, the thing with surf ski paddling is that there's three things that make surf ski paddling unique, and that, and that is this element of, of competition, so you, you compete, it's a performance kayak, it's a performance surf ski. The second is fitness, so people train and they want to get fit and improve their health and their, their well-being and get fitter. And then the third element of surf ski paddling is adventure. And in fact, when you look at how boats have been designed and what people do with surf, ski paddle, surf skis, going downwind and these events that are popping up all over the place, it's all about crossing over channels or going around something or you know, so adventure is a big part of surf ski paddling. We love the South African coastline and everywhere you look on the South African coastline there's just places that are just calling out for adventure. Also I think the landscape geographically of capes always have some dramatic scenery um, and often what I find is that the conditions that you get are, are always chalk and cheese. So your one side of the cape will be stormy and out of control and then you'll come around the cape and it'll be you know, like perfect, still, calm um, and I think lots of times it's that contrast that makes it really special um, and then often also because it's sometimes, a lot of the times, quite hard to get around the cape it's a real achievement to get around there. When you look at the, the southern coast of South Africa, between Port Elizabeth and, and Cape Town, there's five capes that, that stick out, five points that, that really stick out, five places. And these are the five great capes of the South African coastline. And we just decided, wouldn't it be awesome to take a group of people and go and explore and paddle around these capes, actually tick that off like you've paddled around these capes. So we started the, the Five Capes expedition. The Five Capes are Cape Recife, Cape St. Francis, Cape Seal, which is uh, Robig and Clettenberg Bay, and Cape Agulhas, which is the southern tip of Africa. How can you not paddle around that cape? And then it's the, the, the fairest cape of them all, which is the Cape of Good Hope or the Cape of Storms and that's Cape Point. So those are the five capes that we, that we go around. For me, the five capes is special because it's, it's a real achievement to get around all five capes. Obviously, if you had your whole life to get around all five capes, that, you know, that's great. It's an amazing achievement to be able to paddle around all five. But to do it in the space of a week or 10 days uh, is, is really special and, and really hard. So, so during the trip, what we would do is we, we try and do the trip in a space of a week or, or 10 days and we basically give ourselves two days per cape to, to paddle. And we go into Port Elizabeth, we, we, you fly in there and then we do Cape Recife and Cape St. Francis. Cape Recife is in uh, Port Elizabeth or Quebera. What makes Cape Recife 
super special. First is the lighthouse. It's it's just when you think of a lighthouse, you think of the Cape Receive lighthouse. It's just stunning. It's sort of set back. There's nothing around it. It looks desolate and just exactly where you would expect a lighthouse to be is Cape Receif Lighthouse. And then the thing which is really unique about Cape Receif is the wave. I mean it is just a surf ski paddler's dream. So myself I've caught a wave there of 1.1 kilometers. I rode it for over three minutes and um, I, was, I was there on my own just uh, with my wife Michaela and, and it was just amazing, you know, and that, that's always a memory that, that uh, sticks in my, in my mind about Cape Receif. You can catch a wave there on, a, on an average day, over a minute and a half, two minute long rides. They, the, the waves are not normally that big or, or gnarly, they, they can be quite gentle and easily rides well over a kilometer. In fact, to do a trip just to go and do Cape Receif is worth it. Uh, the best is probably a light southwest. Uh, you know, that's what we really prefer to, to do Cape Receif in. Um, obviously, a strong southwest is nice because you can get a good downwind. Um, but a light southwest really enables us to get good waves at the finish. You know, spend a week in Port Elizabeth and, and try and get the wave when, on, when it's good. That's what makes it unique. And then, so basically what we do is we paddle either from a spot called Nurduk to Cape Receif or from Cape Receif to Nurduk, depending on which direction the wind blows. It's about seven or eight kilometers, amazing downwind. And, uh, and that's, that's Cape Receif. Cape St. Francis is, is in a town called St. Francis Bay and it's near the world famous Jeffreys Bay, just down the road from Jeffreys Bay and, and this section of coast is some of South Africa's best surf spots and if you say best in South Africa, also the world. Some, some of the best waves that you'll find anywhere in the world are on this section of coastline and Cape St. Francis is, is an amazing cape. It's actually, it's actually a double cape, so there's Cape St. Francis and Shark Point and what we do is we launch on, on St. Francis, Cape St. Francis Beach. We paddle out around the Cape, get around the Cape uh, where, the, where the lighthouse is. That's South Africa's tallest masonry structure. So basically built out of stones. Then coming in, 
and we actually paddle all the way around to St. Francis Bay and we go around Shark Point, uh, which is a world famous fishing spot. Um, I haven't seen too many sharks there, so as the name would suggest. I'm sure there are, but we haven't seen any there. Um, and then from there, it's a nice easy paddle into St. Francis. And then we finish that paddle paddling down the legendary Bruce's Beauties. And if you're lucky, it might be breaking, but the Bruce's Beauties is, will be forever remembered from the end of summer movie. And we finish uh, in the town of, of San Francis, an amazing cape to paddle. And then while we're there, we might as well do a few downwinds. There's a few great downwinds. And one of the favorite downwinds there is to go from San Francis to Jeffrey's Bay. You actually paddle, it's like 15 kilometers, or just under 15 and a great downwind to do as well. So that's a great part of the trip. What makes Cape Seal famous is the, the name, the Portuguese name for, the, for that bay called Bahia Formosa. And I can just imagine what that place must have looked like when the guys came around that cape and saw that bay. I think the first thing that comes to mind is the beach where we start. I mean, it's just an amazing beach, Robert Beach, wide open, just an incredible uh, place to, to just be and, you know, let alone paddle from. That cape in itself is very similar to, to Cape Point. It's, it's a long piece of land that goes out into the ocean. On the lee side of the cape, it's calm and there's just like thousands of seals on, on this cape barking away. It's like going on, a, going on a game drive and the water is clear. And then when you get around the cape, then you realize why the South African coastline is so notorious because that, it really epitomizes the rough conditions of, of the South African coastline. It's wild. It's super wild. And our goal when we paddle Cape Seal, we always want to try and get to a spot called the island or the, the island. It's a piece of, it's a rock that's been joined to the, the Cape by a big sandbar. Uh, and we've only managed to get around the Cape onto the beach on the other side once out of the four attempts. So it's always a challenge. And you know, we've done the trip uh, three or four times. We've never been able to get to, to the island because it's, it's always rough and wild. But on this particular trip, 
we, we managed to do it. And it was so special. You know, we were joined by some of the local paddlers as well. And that was amazing. So we start on uh, Roburg Fire Beach. We paddle around uh, Cape Seal. Uh, we touch the sand uh, at the island and then we paddle all the way back to a very famous beach called, called uh, Central, uh, Central Beach. Uh, and and uh, it's a beautiful paddle and a beautiful place to stay. While we are in Plittenberg Bay, or staying there, we also go and do the Neisner Heads. And the Neisner Lagoon is, I think it's South Africa's uh, biggest lagoon. And uh, it's very, very tidal. And the Heads is a very narrow piece of, it's like a very narrow entrance to this lagoon. And it's, it's there's these, basically like a big gate, these big gates, these massive cliffs. So panning in and out through there is spectacular. When I think of the Neisner Heads and, you know, same as, as all these spots that, that, that we're talking about, they, you know, when, you, when the name comes up, you, these flood of memories just keep coming back. The Neisner Heads are, are infamous. Uh, you know, they are, it's, it's a dramatic piece of coastline. It's not something that you can do every day because you need to get the tides right and there can't be a lot of swell. And we've had some pretty hairy moments inside those, those heads. We made a rule for ourselves that we wouldn't paddle in or out through the heads on an outgoing tide and a big swell. And then on this year's capes, it was, it was, it was funny because, we, you know, going into, the guys were all keen to paddle out or in through the knives and the heads, and we said, no, you know, this is what we're not going to do. And on the day, it turned out to be the most amazing, perfect day. And we ended up paddling into the heads uh, at low tide, which is exactly what we said we would never, ever do again. But I think it was great because, I mean, it really was perfect. For this trip, we had great conditions. We started at a beach called, called Duffels, and it's about seven kilometers or eight kilometers from the heads. We did a beautiful uh, little downwind paddle to the heads. Uh, we met together and we paddled in through the heads together. And for me, it really was a highlight of, of this year's trip. So it was fantastic to do that.
Okay, sitting outside the Nizna Heads. Perfect day to do this. Couldn't have thought better. Light west, small swell, low tide. So it's lovely. Yes, yes. Cape Gullis, tough place. <laughs> when you get there and you roll into town, it's it's a harsh place. It's the bottom of Africa, it gets pelted by the elements, you know, uh, wind, uh, seawater, just everything. It's, it's a tough place. It's just it's it's just always the wind is either pumping from one direction or pumping from the other direction. There's always swell. The entry and exit to get into the water and get out of the water is super tricky. It's gnarly. There's over rocks. Uh, there's reefs breaking everywhere. So it really is a pretty tricky cape to paddle. Paddling around is is tough. It's it's a real challenge, and I think it's it's one of it's a real achievement for the guys to get around. It's not a cape in terms of when you think of a cape, it doesn't sort of stick out into the sea, but it is the bottom of Africa. And just to be able to do it is something which which a lot of people if you can tick that off your tick box you've definitely accomplished something so for this year this year's trip we we had to leave early in the morning to get just there was a small window of opportunity over the weekend for us to paddle uh cape Agalis and and we you know we managed to just fit it in cape Agalis to me is um is, is really one that seals the deal you know it's, it's really the one that you want to take off and, and do Five Caps ends at my favorite place in the world to paddle surf skis, and that's the, the Cape of Good Hope. The Cape of Good Hope is probably the one cape that represents the Five Caps. I like to call it by the, its first name, the Cape of Storms, because I've seen it when it's when it's wild. And Sir Francis Drake, which is which was that uh, the benevolent pirate of uh, the, the British Navy. He called uh, the Cape of Storms the fairest of them all. And I think he certainly knew what he was talking about. When you see the Cape 
to the Cape Point, to the Cape of Good Hope or the Cape of Storms, when you see it and you paddle it, you realize that is when you think of a cape, that's the picture that you see in your mind. Just these massive, like rugged cliffs going up, you know, 40, 50, I think maybe the highest might be 100 meters, I'm not too sure. So you'll have uh, wild, big, windy conditions on the one side and then mild, sunny, flat conditions on the other side. Uh, it's about a 12 kilometer paddle. We launch from a beach called Platform Beach and then depending on the conditions, uh, if, there's not enough, if there's not too much surf around, and then we'll paddle around the Cape and then back into Belfast Bay Beach and definitely a fitting way to finish the, the Five Capes adventure. For me, it's really rewarding seeing people um, break through barriers on the trip. Um, you know, whether it's whether we launch from or come in, um, down in conditions. Not always the distance. We don't paddle massive distances, but seeing people break break through barriers for me is really very rewarding. So that's it. That's the five caps. And um, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, it's, you can get quite pretty nostalgic about it. You know, it's it's uh, it's such a it's almost like a spiritual thing to do. It's like almost like it's a journey. You know, you're going on this journey, and and you you get to uh, have a super hardcore adventure. It's a it's a it's a proper adventure, and you get to see some of the most beautiful parts of South Africa, and certainly 
uh, a trip that I will never get tired of. And that's the five caps. How was that, Garth? A hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>